Honestly, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. But the truth is hard to swallow. Guys, rabbits, just like any other livestock, have certain ailments that can hinder progress in growth, general well-being, fertility, and most of times can actually lead to eventual death of your animal. Sadly, guys, this is the truth. And we don't want to only tell you the nice and juicy, beautiful story of rabbit. Guys, we want to take you to the dark side. You know, join us as we explore the dark side. But much more importantly, measures that we have taken to ensure that this dark cloud does not fall on us. And guess what? We've been successful so far. And that is what we want to share with you today. Guys, we are conquering. We are not perfect yet, but we are conquering the mortality on the farms. And that is what we want to bring to you today. Hello, everyone. Uh, once again, you are welcome to Ace Rabbit Farm. And indeed, um, we are conquering diseases. We are conquering mortality on Ace Rabbit Farms. And so far, so good. And that is what we want to bring you today. Okay, guys. Um, if you are first time here, you know how we do it. Um, just like this video. If, if this is kind of um, aspect of rabbit farming fascinates you, like the videos and um, you know share with your community so that together we can grow. Guys, um, the dark side, as we call it here at Ace Rabbit Farm, is basically speaking around two major issues. Okay diseases and mortality you know maybe the loss of potential revenue because some of these animals as you can see in the pictures are pretty old you know they get to eight weeks and then there is this sudden death so i think that is what we want to explore today and uh, it is not about you know like i said it's not about giving you the bad side or we don't want to be the bearer of the bad side but we also want to paste uh, paint um, a very realistic uh, picture for, for for new farmers because some of these things we are discovering ourselves guys when we started the way we are free flowing information to our community we never had that okay the closest thing to free flow of information was perhaps modin um and i think we even started around the same time as modin or we started you know before Modin even started. So basically what I'm trying to say is that we never really had anyone to guide us. And everything that we have done at Ace Rabbit Farm, guys, again, it is first-hand experiences that we are picking up. It is, you know, try and error. It is, it is research-based. And so we really struggle through and we've got tons of experiences. And that is what we really want to bring to you. So everything that we are sharing with you right here on this forum, guys, it is purely what we have experienced and what we intend to share with you okay all right so uh, when we speak of the dark side guys it is the side that makes us go low it is the size that makes us lose revenue it is a size that sees our animals dying it is the size that we do not know how to manage or control the situation but the good news is guys we have overcome all of this and we have found the best way to, to triumph in the midst of all this disaster. So for any up and coming rabbit farmers, just be aware that there is going to be loss on your farm. There is going to be diseases on your farm. And right here on this channel is an opportunity for you then to find out how we are doing it and how we are overcoming that. Okay. Um, the sooner we know that rabbits are very, very delicate animal and sensitive animal, uh, the better, you know. You know, rabbits are super delicate. You know, a simple situation can escalate into immediate death. Within 10 to 24 hours, your animal will be dead. Okay, so let's pay attention to some key activities that we are going to do to ensure that we can prolong the life of this animal. We can save them and in by so doing, we can make, uh, you know, profit. Now, the dark side, as I, I call it, is, is quite a complex topic, but, but guys... As you always know, we, we like to, you know, you know, simplify it because that is what we have experienced. And by so simplifying it, it becomes very easier for us to communicate to us. Guys, 
you know, we, we fall into trouble from external sources. There are external things that happen that can give our farm or that can move the dark cloud onto our farm, okay? There are internal things that we do that can cause us to suffer these uh, illnesses and disease and mortality. There are environmental things that can happen to our farm and that can result in the mortality and diseases that we are talking about. The final one, guys, there are genetic issues. Issues to do with the back, issues to do with the dough, issues to do with the lineage of the animals that we use in our production. And that basically gives us a clear indication of where we are tackling the issue from. So, guys, external, internal, environmental, and genetics. So then we'll take each of these topics and then try and break it down so that when you go into this rabbit farming, guys, you pay attention to these four key areas. By doing so, you then reduce any possibility of troubles that will come along your line. You see, the, so the, the key word is reduce because I promise you guys, you are going to see death on your farm. You are going to see diseases on your farm. But if you are aware of these four key areas, then you should be able to manage or control uh, such an um, uh, you know such a calamity on your farm okay so um, my question really is you know can we do something about these four key areas that i have clearly outlined or maybe do you know of other areas or other activities that we can do to improve or reduce the death on our farms guys this is the right opportunity for you to jump straight into the comment section and start posting your your understanding your own experiences so that together we can extract valuable data that we can use to improve uh, activities on our farm number one to reduce mortality on our farm number two to reduce death on our farm guys once we can remove all these dark clouds from our farming environment we stand a better chance of profiting you know, this just reminds me, and let me just post this here by, by the way. Guys, everything we have been doing on this channel right now is only got to do with the production side of the actual rabbit farming. Guys, there is a bigger topic that is yet to be explored. And uh, I really want to engage you. I really want your commitment. I really want your involvement, participation in this discussion so that together we can build you know, a very useful resource timeless resource that we can always fall back on for references and for reuse in in uh, in our rabbit farming and as we grow okay so um external sources got to do with you know diseases that we we, we bring into our farm from outside guys it could be a new animal that we are introducing into our farm that is coming with a disease from the previous farm you know, it could be a human being, an external person who is moving from farm to farm. And because of this, that person becomes a carrier, an agent of the disease. Guys, the common disease that we see in this particular space includes, you know, the mite, um, you know, the coxie, or coccidiosis, they call it. And the most deadly one, which we all know is called the RHD, you know, rabbit hemorrhagic diseases. On a, caused by a virus so guys these are coming from external sources now there are straightforward way of preventing it the question is how how do we prevent this guys we either put a barrier we either fence our farm very cleanly put a barrier and make sure nothing from outside comes into the farm especially bringing a different animal into the farm a new animal uh, from outside into the farm you need to quarantine that animal in a totally different environment for a couple of weeks. You know, if it is a human being who is coming to your farm, you need to make sure there is no touching or there is no, you know, and so forth. You know, they have to be a disinfectant for, for, for cleaning your hands. All of this will lead into you being able to reduce or prevent an external agent or an external sources that is bringing diseases onto your farm. Guys, if you check the background i intentionally show the background where you've got chickens you know of course we do have um you know the domestic chicken the the local chicken doing the roaming around which we saw a lot of benefit but if you think carefully about that guys these chicken are on the ground all the time 
and coccidiosis in the form of the oocyte, in other words, the, 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 the eggs are in the ground and the chicken are the one of the biggest carrier of coccidiosis around. And if you have this chicken flying over your cages, you know, right underneath your cages, doing their daily activities, guys, what is the chance of them passing coccidiosis to your rabbit? It's pretty high. And so for this reason, guys, you could see at Ace Rabbit Farm, we've put a solid fence, a wire mesh fence around the entire farm to slow down or to reduce the number of chickens we have going near our rabbit. Guys, can you see that? That for me is the very first approach of, you know, um, you know, stopping the external sources. And, and I think by, I'm sure you can see the format already. Guys, our principle is always about preventative. It's always about preventative. We, pre we prefer to prevent the illness or the disease from coming as opposed to the disease has now arrived and then we have to, you know, try and cure it. If after doing all these preventative measures and still the disease arrives, then we jump into how to cure it, okay? So for us, it is paramount that we prevent the disease in the first place. And if the preventative method does not work, then we can start thinking about how then to treat it, okay? So, external, done, dusted. Let's move on to the second one, which is now the internal. Guys, um, the internal has got a lot to do with you, the farmer. Guys, uh, your internal processes, you know, your hygiene practices, your cleanliness, your routines, you know, um, you know the type of litter boxes. How do you prepare your litter box before serving to your, your animal? And then, obviously, um, you know, spacing is very, very critical. The feed, the type of feed, the, the storage of the feed, the freshness of the feed, mold, bacteria, guys, all of that growing, you know, all of that. And obviously doing some initial treatment like coccidiosis treatment, regardless whether they have it or not, you implement coccidiosis treatment because the feed, again, is coming from outside. So the internal processes, even though it is internal, you can see it's directly linked to the external okay so um let's take a quick stop here and I'll, I'll get back um yeah uh, sorry i'm, I'm back uh, but one very key or uh, one very important thing for us to note is that um the farmer is a critical catalyst to this whole farming exercise because our animals are in cages guys it is therefore the absolute duty of the farmer to ensure that the animal receives sufficient nutrition you know, sufficient space, uh, you know, clean litter boxes. Because once you put a litter box in there and the animal goes and make a cage in there, if the litter box is an old version with some dirt, with some, you know, hidden bacteria on the corner, guess what? Your new litter, they're going to have their eye infections, all of this, guys. Skin infection, eye infection, all of this will lead down to uh, less profit. So, guys, that is what I can say about internal. But on the internal side, the biggest risk is actually the feed, okay? Because the feed, again, is coming from outside. Guys, just watch out because anything that the animal takes inside, eats, it goes into the system of the animal. And that is the number one causes of illness, okay? So check for quality of your feed. Check for the freshness of your feed. Check to be sure your feed does not have mold. What is more important is where is your feed stored? You know, are they stored in a certain area where you've got rats and mouse going in there to feed from exactly the same place? And guess what? They will urinate on top of it. And you know, rats and mouse, they carry a lot of diseases, guys. So then that becomes a huge source of diseases for your animal. Okay, guys, let's move down to the environment. You know, so we keep insisting that rabbits require a small space. Yes, but the environment has to be, um, you know, adequate. It has to be sufficiently good. Okay, because rabbits are also very susceptible to respiratory diseases. So guys, the environment is such a huge and important part of how we prevent diseases. Okay, you know, you know, from good quality airflow, uh, heat, you know, noise, rain, you know, and the general, you know, uh, condition of the space, you know, cages, hatches. Remember that we are in the tropics, guys, and the tropics is very notorious 
for having wet or high humidity areas and high humidity basically mean good environment for 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 disease festering to to you know to grow and so the environment guys is very, very important now you can see the environment immediately falls onto or takes the lead from internal sources where it has to do a lot with you the routines and the cleanliness of the environment so you can see all these three points already are interlinked the last point is the genetics and guys that is so so important but let me take my time and then we dive into genetics okay so um, when it comes to the genetics guys it's all about selection of your breeding stock guys if you guys we've, we've had several discussions around you know breeding stock selection not all animals are good for breeding guys it's because of the genetics get the right breed number one when you get the right breed then check that particular breed for abnormalities you know the bone structure the tail you know the splitting of the legs and so forth and so on you know the size of the animal is the animal the right type for breeding check all of this because if you pick up a problem on the tail of the animal that problem will come all the way to the head and vice versa if you pick up a problem from the head so let's talk about malocclusion malocclusion a lot of that has got to do with internal uh, it's, it's genetic issue is bone deformation if you pick up malocclusion from one of your animals guys it is going to repeat itself over and over again i'm not saying that it does not happen due to bad practices it can also happen due to poor feeding and poor quality of hay dry twigs and hay in your feed which helps the animal to keep down the growing of the various teeth in, in, in yeah especially the incisors so can you see genetics has got a huge contribution guys we've basically touched on the four points okay we've touched on our four points and i i just want to summarize that quickly but before we do that yeah before before we go straight to the summary i want to give um you know a big shout out to moses moses is from ravine rabbitry guys we did a trip we took a trip into the deep bush into behind um you know um a buri in a small place called pokrum we went to moses and moses impressed me a lot uh it's a it's, it's a decent size of a farm but he had in there a food bath and a hand wash and sanitizers now that immediately tells you that he's controlling the external sources of uh, diseases onto his farm and for me that i really really appreciate that and for that I've, i'm calling moses out and i'm saying thank you very much for keeping that practice on yes at ace farm you can see in the pictures here we've started to uh, follow the process of implementing the food bath and the hand cleaning uh, to be sure that we don't bring external diseases into the country well into the farm really even into the country as well okay guys i think we've said quite a bit um if we could just bring this down to summary um yes rabbit farming is not all that um you know glossy as we have seen there could be some difficult times there could be some challenging times and we decided to call this the dark cloud okay guys it is all about you know prevent reduce and ensure that your animal remain healthy you know we encourage the farmers to be very very vigilant you know observe with keen interest and respond appropriately okay if we follow the principle of external sources control internal sources control environmental check control and obviously genetics through proper selection guys we stand a better chance of winning when it comes to disease and mortality guys that is what i wanted to bring to you today and by so doing um, i hope you've enjoyed it i hope this has opened a new chapter in your effort i hope you would have then be better at approaching disease management mortality management uh, maybe in the next um, topics we might then pick up each and every disease and we can talk in details about each disease and how to prevent it you know how to prevent it organically and how to also prevent it using the veterinary uh, medications okay all right guys you know how we do it here always keep farming keep farming and catch you again soon okay Bye.